name is Nate Ani, and I'm going to be talking about uh, one-click deployment with Launcher and Docker. Um, so you can follow me on uh, Twitter at Nate A. Um, I'm a Python hacker. I just moved to uh, San Francisco from Boston, uh, actually Berkeley, um, to be exact. Uh, I run two companies, uh, Jazz Carta, a web development company, and um, AppSumbler is a startup which is exploring ways to make open source more consumable. So does anyone know what this is? A graph of. <laughs> this is uh, GitHub's growth over the last few years. So um, as of 2013, they were at 10 million Git, uh, repositories on GitHub. Um, and what's interesting about this graph is that uh, half of the, more than half of those have, have been added to GitHub just in the last year. So 5.5 million repos. Um, so, so GitHub is really a treasure trove for lots of amazing software. But um, unfortunately, it's, it's pretty in, inaccessible to a lot of people out there. Um, so this is the problem that we're trying to address at AppSumbler. Uh, we built a simple widget that enables deployment of web apps with one click. Uh, so first, I want to give a demo of this widget. And then I'm going to explain how we're using Docker uh, to power the back end. OK, so let me switch over here. Um, so this is the widget. You can go to launcher.appsumbler.com and you can see it. Um, and we have a suite of different apps here. I'm just going to choose Etherpad because it's really fast to deploy. I uh, just put in my email. And we're now launching a Docker container. We're assigning a URL to it. And if I click on that, uh, sometimes there's a little bit of a delay. Well, that's loading. I'm going to run over here and show you the uh, email that gets sent out. So I get an email saying that it's been successful, the URL. And if I click on this URL, I can see um, how much time I have remaining. So basically spin up a Docker container, and we're running that open source application for an hour, and then we shut it down af after an hour. Um, so let's go back over here. OK, uh, it's still, still loading. There we go. So I can you know, start a new pad. And um, that was very fast, right? Within 30 seconds, I had Etherpad running. Um, so what about other apps? So Miro Community is, is a really cool Django application some of you may have heard of. Um, so you go to the site, you're like, wow, this looks great. I want to try it out. Um, OK, there's no way to actually try it out. So I go to open source. And OK, maybe if you're a technical guy, you might want to spend your weekend trying to figure out how to install this thing. But maybe not. Maybe you just want to go over here to launcher.appsimilar.com slash Miro Community and get that software in a matter of minutes. So we've taken uh, this software. And just like with Etherpad, we've been able to containerize it and launch it within uh, a matter of minutes. And basically, the way this works is you go to the, the, the repo um, where the software is hosted, you fork the project, and you create what's called a Docker file. Um, and the Docker file is basically instructions that, that describe how this software needs to get installed on a, on a Linux box. Um, you can see it's pretty straightforward. It's just you know, apt-get install these different packages, pip install this stuff, you know, add a supervisor D. Uh, and then tell it which port you want to run it on, and then fire up the supervisor thing. Uh, once you've done that, you can actually build that image, and you can push it up to what's called the Docker index. Um, and the Docker index is, is sort of like PyPy for Python. It's, it's, a, it's a repository of images um, that are essentially fully contained applications that are already built and ready to go. So you can see we've, we've already pushed up a bunch of different um, Python, Django, and other types of applications up to here. And you can just, similar to Git, you can get push and get uh, pull these, these different applications down. We're using another open source tool called Shipyard. Uh, this is real, uh, built in Django. And what this lets you do is basically manage your Docker container. So if I refresh this, you'll see that I've, I've got a couple, um, a couple different apps running right now um, that are all um, running on our, on our Docker instance. And over here, you can see these are all the images that we've added to our, our Docker server. And the reason that we're using Shipyard is it has a really cool uh, way of creating an application. So these are, these are a bunch of different applications that have been created where essentially we're mapping a URL to a, a Docker container. So here's the URL, the Miro community site, and this is the container that it's getting mapped to on port 80. Um, so this is all happening in the background. When you push that button on our launcher widget, we're essentially um, doing all this in the background for you. Um, 
the other thing you can do is you can embed um, these widgets on your uh, your website or blog if you, if you do WordPress consulting or heaven heaven pit forbid you know Drupal or something you can click on one of these uh, buttons and you can just drop this in your your uh, readme file um, on on GitHub the restructured text so we're making it really easy for you to just drop these widgets on your website and make it easy for people to deploy it. Um, let me jump back to the presentation. Um, so how many people here have heard of Docker? Raise your hand. OK, how many people have, keep your hand up if you've used Docker. OK, um, so, so Docker is, is essentially an open source engine that automates the deployment of, of any application as a lightweight, portable, self-sufficient container that can run virtually anywhere. Um, and it uses this thing, these things called Linux containers. Um, so many of you are probably familiar with like virtual machines, you know, virtual box or VMware. And this is, on the left, you have like a, an application running on a VMware or a VirtualBox machine, where you have you know, the host OS, the guest OS, all the bins, the libraries, and then the app. Uh, Linux containers are isolated, but they share the OS. And where appropriate, they share the binaries. So they're much more lightweight. They launch in seconds. They're disposable. Um, this is some more information about sort of how, you know, with, with a virtual machine, every app um, Every copy of an app and every modification requires a new virtual server, whereas with Linux containers, you can take the original app and then you can essentially um, create diffs between each new version. And these diffs are very, very small. Um, this is the, the URL to the Shipyard project if you want more information about that. Uh, and there's the URL to launcher.assembler.com. We'd love for you to try it out, um, give us feedback, and if you're interested in working on the project, uh, come talk to me. Thanks.